Hello and welcome to another video and in this video it's time to do the hips slash pelvis section of the new prototype for the powered armoured exoskeleton project. Now this is quite a complicated component so we'll take a look at the old prototype and see what I have there and then we'll go on to the new design for the new exoskeleton. But first I thought I'd better go over the amount of movement that you actually need to replicate with an exoskeleton regarding the hips and pelvis area. This being relevant to what we have to achieve. So you've got the obvious movement, which is just backwards and forwards like this. That's obviously easy to replicate. However, after that, it does start to get more difficult. So you do have to have a bit of this movement sideways. However, it is worth noting you don't need that much movement. You don't need to lift your leg up that far, but you do basically need to be able to do this. But at the same time, you need to be able to move your leg from left to right in that motion. The combination of all these means you can move your legs in all of these shapes as required. The other thing to bear in mind again with this is the exoskeleton is going round you. So you can't just fit like a ball joint on or something because the exoskeleton means to move round your leg, not just rotate on the spot. With that gone over, we'll go back to the old prototype. With the leg removed and the groin pad removed, we can see into where the pelvis is. On this prototype, the pelvis was one big piece of both plastic and carbon fibre that was mounted to the lower part of the spine and to the belt. You then had two hinged carbon fibre arms that went on each side, both on pivot points, that did also have lock limits, so they couldn't extend too far. These then attached to the exoskeleton for the legs. This system did work, but it was flawed. However, there wasn't much point in actually changing this and modifying it to work any better because I knew I'd have to move on to the next prototype. One major flaw in this design that needs solving for the next prototype is that you really need some kind of sliding joint on the arm system to allow the leg exoskeleton to basically rotate around the leg, which means the pelvis arms, if you will, do have to extend and contract. The problem is I don't want to have a really thin, finicky rail system because it will just fill with muck and dirt and then stop working. Another major flaw of this system is that I need actuators to be mounted on the end of the leg exoskeletons attaching to the hips. But at the same time, for reasons I'll explain very soon, I want to be able to split the legs off from the chest and basically have them clip back together so that you can put the suit on without it all being in one piece. I.e. I want to be able to put the legs on first and then put the top half on. And the final major flaw was that this system wasn't 100% load bearing. All of the weight of the suit and in fact the user acts down upon all of the suit vertically, including on the hip joints. The problem for the hip joints is there is so much mobility required. Everything has to be really tight to actually be load bearing and designed in a certain way to make sure that at every angle of which you step, you're always going to be on a load bearing part. So what was that reason as to why I wanted this to be able to split into multiple pieces for putting it on? Well, originally my intention was to have this all mounted on a frame, kind of as you see here, and it'd have some Iron Man-esque thing where basically you'd open it all up and then step back into it and it'd either latch into it or you would strap yourself into it. The problem is for that, that any latching mechanism is extremely complicated, probably going to break and you do run into some issues if you're going to have thick armour on it which then gets you into the strapping point of view. So actually using Velcro straps and strapping you in, which is basically what I'm doing now. The issue is if the whole thing is on a frame, like as you see here, what parts are you putting on first? Typically you're gonna be putting the legs on first, which means you then got to bend down, but it's very difficult to bend down when you try to put it on then because it is on a frame, which means the legs have to be straight, which means you kind of have to bend over in a weird way that doesn't really work to try strap everything onto it. And then you need to put the chest down and you've got the same issue and then you can't move you can't rotate your waist or anything like that also then for actually transporting this thing you basically need a hearse to transport it in like you're transporting a coffin however if you just split it down so you can put the legs on separate that solves a lot of issues you make sure it's all comfortable on your legs and then you can just slip the chest part on the back part on and the arm part on after and then connect it at the hips that also then means you can just transport it in a regular vehicle. You can put the legs on the back seat and the chest in the boot if you want to. And that is why it needs to split apart, but that does make the hips a bit more complicated to do, which is why we'll get onto the CAD design next. And here is what I came up with. So from the attaching point of view, it attaches the same way as the previous pelvis design and the old prototype, i.e. attaches to the bottom of the spine. I've also put a spacer block on because I think it'll need one between the spine and the belt. The main large bracket there will be 5mm thick of carbon fibre. 
And then if we rotate along to the back, you'll see the bracket that holds the pelvic arm brackets. This for now will be 3D printed out of carbon fiber PLA, but I am designing everything so I can make it out of forged carbon fiber in the future with some 3D printed molds. But as carbon fiber is expensive and time consuming, I just want to 3D print all of these pieces first to make sure I get it right before going down that route. This is a pivoting bracket, so it'll have two dowels slash bolts that run through the middle of it. So then the arms can bolt onto them. This is just to help me get some extra movement out of it that I think I'll need. I can also add a lock limits in the future if I find these are going to move too much. But just having a stationary bracket, I don't think will add enough movement. Speaking of which, the arms will be printed out of carbon fiber PLA. But I have made it so I can put carbon tubes over the end, make the T-piece brackets out of carbon tubes and then wrap the bending carbon fiber once that I know all of this is correct. That will also help to make sure that the joins in these arms will actually be strong enough for the testing. The next part is both the actuator attachment point as well as a multi-directional pivot as well as the actual attachment point for the legs. The idea being that it can pivot back and forth on this T-bar while also being able to rotate in the shaft and provide movement that way. The T-bar will of course then be attached to the actuator which will be attached to the rest of the exoskeleton brackets for the legs, which mean the legs can then be fitted onto the operator and then the shaft can be slid into the pelvis pieces when you put the top half of the suit on. And once all of this is strapped up and in place, the shaft is long enough to make sure that none of this comes apart and it all stays secure and tight to you while still actually providing extra movement with the shaft being able to slide in and out to a degree. All of these joints combined and working in unison should mean that there is enough movement in all of this to allow the leg exoskeleton to move around the operator's leg. Each little joint providing a bit more of a different angle to allow a rotational movement despite the fact part of these are just straight bars. While at the same time being completely vertically load bearing meaning the weight of the suit will never be on the wearer. While at the same time reducing complicated parts and reducing parts that won't work once they've got dirt and dust in them. Or at least that's my theory anyway. Now that I've gone through all of that, it is time to get all these parts printed, get the carbon fiber machine, get it all together and see what it's actually like on the exoskeleton that we've been building in the previous videos. Oh, and if you like these type of out there projects, please feel free to like and subscribe. We've now got the pieces 3D printed and I'm gonna start with the arms. So while there will be carbon fiber tube put over this at some point, which we have the tube here, I'm not 100% sure whether these arms will be completely the right size yet and I'm not going to know until I've got the legs on. So I'm going to try to save as much of this expensive carbon fiber tube as I can and leave this one out as it does just slip over the end. However, I do need to put it on this end as you can see with how this attaches. Once this is bonded on, I won't be able to put the carbon fiber tube over it. So I need to put the tube over this end and on this end and then attach it together, which we have one that I've made earlier. We've got a tube cut out here that goes over that centre 3D printer piece with the hole that should just about line up there. And then this other carbon fibre piece that I've had to hand cut, which just about lines up as such. So that when it is all pressed together, you can see how it fits pretty well and I'll just be putting some epoxy resin in that to hold it in place. In the future, I will wrap this joint in carbon fibre to make sure it's as strong as possible. However, for now, just gluing the joint will be good enough. Next up, we have the pivoting mount for the actuator hubs. So you see how these pre and pretty well, quite smooth. And you can also see how if I make these out of forged carbon fiber in the future, you can imagine how it's all curved and can basically sit down into a mold like that with a flat piece over the top. So we're putting in one end of the shaft like so, and then fixing the other end of the shaft onto the end like that, and then putting a bolt through the center hole and through the end of the shaft once I've drilled it out to the right thickness which we can look at this one that I prepared earlier. It does fit in pretty well. If anything, I can tighten these tolerances up a bit more. One thing that I didn't think about, this is an easy fix, is the bolt that's going through here, the button head bolt does clash a little bit on that side. However, this will be good enough for testing and I'll just have to get some countersink bolts to fit down there that I'll probably forget to order like all the other bolts I forget to order. And you can see how that now fits down the shaft like that. You get the movement that way, you get some extension and contraction that way and then you also get that pivot. Next up, we have the carbon fiber bracket, a fair chunk of five millimeters. It should definitely be strong enough. Can always double it up in the future if needed. So we'll get the spacer block mounted on to there, and then we'll get the mounting bracket for the arms, which will bolt onto there, 
and then the arms will then sit through the middle. And there we have it mounted on. We've got the arms pivoting and we've got the hub drives on the end. There is a little bit of play in here just because I didn't have the right size dowel, unfortunately, but I'll add it to the list of things that I need. Now it's time to get all of this tried on and see what it's like. And finally, we have the exoskeleton back on. Now, for those that watched the video before, you remember I didn't really have any good hinges on the shoulders yet, which I have been able to put in, so I can actually move myself around enough. However, I haven't put a sleeve like what I've got on that arm onto this arm yet, hence the Velcro strap. But as for the part for this video, we've got the pelvis pieces here, so you can see how they do actually come around to the sides pretty well. Now, I actually think that these brackets are actually the correct size. However, I think the back plate, the pelvis needs to be moved out a little bit further, as I can feel it touching my jeans there, which means it won't be very good for running. Now, if we take those pivoting hook drive pieces, you can see as we slide it into there, how it would roughly sit. It's a little bit too far forward again, but once that back plate is moved back a bit, I think it'll line up nicely with the hip joint and it should work accordingly with the pivots. And you can now imagine if you had the leg pieces on and strapped to the legs, how these wouldn't be able to come out. They're nice long enough so that once you actually slot them in, like so, you're gonna get the pluses of all that movement without them coming loose. You also then don't have any complicated locking mechanisms. And if we rotate it onto the back, you can see how it now fits. It does feel pretty sturdy, it also fits well with the belt. You might be wondering at this point, why aren't I fitting an actuator to this, bolting it onto the side, so you can see how it actually fits and how it moves. Well, the main reason is I don't have any spare mock-up actuators to fit to it. So far, I've just been fitting random bits of spares that I've had to hold it all together. However, in the next video, we'll be sorting that with a passive elastic actuator. As while I am determined and I will be making my own electronic actuator from scratch, this being a prototype of, if I'm being realistic, because of the different processes that go into it, ordering things and everything like that, this is probably going to be the very last thing I actually complete for this suit. I'll probably have all of the armor done, helmet done, everything done, and then be bought with the actuators on. So in the meantime, I do need something to fit into these gaps to mimic the joints. So some passive, elastically assisted actuators will be in the next video. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you on the next one. Elastic actuators next, and then the leg pieces, then the boots, and then onto the armour, as well as some mobility testing, as well as some other things on the channel. So please feel free to like and subscribe, and I hope you have a great day.